Hi, welcome to Talk Straight Bible. We're your host, Jeremiah. And Rafina. And we're here to do one thing, folks. Teach the Word. The Word of God. Now, we want to remind you that we are students of also, the Word of God. Amen. We are not amen. we are not over anybody. We are simply study. This is a house that studies. The walls are lined with the Word of God. Amen. Our floors are paved with His principles. Our roof is the oracles, and we are diving into the Word of God. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? We've been talking about Proverbs, and, uh, you know, Proverbs, the book of wisdom, no matter where you go, if you open the book of Proverbs and you just fall on a word, it's, it's there. It's wisdom. I remember the story of a young man in his uh, birthday. He... Uh, he was old enough to get a car, so he went to his father, and he asked his father to buy him a car. His father said, Happy birthday, and gave him a Bible. And he said, Son, read the Proverbs. Well, the son got angry because he didn't get the money for the car. And he put the Bible on the dresser and left it for years, but then his father passed away. And with grief and, you know, regret, one day he looked at the Bible, dusted it off, and picked it up and remembered that his father said, Son, read the Proverbs. And he opened to the book of Proverbs, and there was a check there for the car. I'm sorry, I have to laugh. There was a check there for the car. He said, Son, read the Proverbs, for in it you'll find wisdom. Mm -hmm. So in the wisdom, he found a check. And you know what? This is what God gives us when we open the book of Proverbs. It's a big, mm -hmm. fat check mm -hmm. of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we can glean on. You know, I just want to start in verse 1 of Proverbs 1, because I know we already did this, but it says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. The first thing that we we notice is that there, at least I notice, I mean, me, I, I like to count letters because I'm, I look at the Hebrew text. The first thing I noticed was that there, it was made of six words, this first verse, and it represents man, beast, and even the enemy. But watch this. There were six words that in the Hebrew that make up Proverbs 1, verse 1. And there are 21 letters. And you know 21, Rafina, is the number of I am. Mm. But then the first and the last letter of that verse in the Hebrew blew me away because... The first letter represents water, and the last letter represents a shepherd's staff. And here, the Proverbs is teaching us that if we study God's Word and listen, we will be led by the water of God's Word to the shepherd, but then the shepherd leads us to the water. Wow. This is what it's all about. So, let's look at it from this point of view. Solomon being the wisest man ever born... He didn't have to work for wisdom, but he had to live it out so that it would unfold. And see, sometimes God teaches us things, mm -hmm. and then he walks with us and unfolds it so that we can learn. Mm -hmm. there's, an, there's, a, there's a saying among the Jews, and I had to really think about it because I, I, was, I was going to, you know, you just don't believe everything. But this, they, they have so much wisdom when it comes to the Word of God. And he said that, when you sit down to study, the Lord studies with you. But I said, the Lord don't have to study anything, but that's my mind, my puny little mind. And as I begin to think the way they do and look at the scriptures, I, the Lord, I have to say, the Lord opened it up to me and I said, oh, wow. And they use the word in the Hebrew that represent companionship, that when you sit down to study the word of God, God is your companion in your study. Mm. You got that? He never leaves you alone. So when you sit down to get wisdom from God, believe me, he is your companion, your friend that studies with you. He is the one teaching you. Mm. He's not learning, but he is giving you to learn, and therefore he's the companion of your study. And I love that. Every time I sit down to study now, I know I'm never alone in my study. Wow. 
He always studies with me. Well, isn't that a little like with teachers, right? I mean, sometimes, you know, when the teacher is teaching, first of all, they have to study in order to teach you. But many mm -hmm. times, even as they're teaching, mm -hmm. they're learning <laughs> because revelation right, right. opens up. But God doesn't have to learn, right? No, of course but, not. But he's the, the, the word that they use is that when you sit down to study, he is your friend, your companion. Mm -hmm. He is, he is mm -hmm. slowly teaching you, unfolding his truths. And you know what? I, the story of Boaz came to mind this morning, and it was interesting how Boaz did not allow the workers to harvest the entire field, but to leave some behind for Ruth. Mm -hmm. And see, when we sit down with the Word of God, God always leaves things for us to glean on. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. He's love kind. That. I love that. Okay? And watch this now. The first thing, however, we must do is confess that we're poor, that God is rich in wisdom. We're poor. We don't have it. And we must repent for trying to live our life by our own reason and our own intellect, which is flesh. When we do that, you know what the king does? The king takes us into a most beautiful citadel, a city of wisdom. And we can see the walls that are lined with gold and stones, precious stones in them. And we can see how beautiful the silver lines run through the, the walls. Can you imagine walking into a city like that? And God says, here's wisdom. Just walk in and look at the beauty. Right. It says, it says to seek it out as, as of gold, as in gold, right? Yeah. So we're going to read now. Um, we're going we're gonna to start from the Proverbs <laughs> 2.20. Um, yeah. The last, the last yeah, two the verses. Yeah, the last three verses. Three verses, excuse um, me, I'm sorry. Yesterday, we talked about walking in the way, right? And so it says that thou may walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of righteousness. Mm. 21 says, for the upright shall dwell in the land mm. and the perfect shall remain in it. Wow. And 22 says, but the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressor shall be rooted out of it. So I just read the King James Version. I was just talking to Jeremiah about this because I also like I, I, I also like to um, do a comparison um, with different versions so that I can get a better understanding mm -hmm. in my old English mind. That's wise. Um, my new <laughs> English mind, my modern <laughs> English mind um, of what the scripture is actually saying. However, yes. what's can be a little dangerous is that if we still don't go back to the the um well, the, the original yes. the King original yes. language mm -hmm. the Hebrew and the Greek to get an understanding and you're going to find that in the King James version because yes. in the King James version there is also um the concordance mm -hmm. uh, the strong concordance that's attached to it because I was looking at this scripture, because we're going to be talking more about 21 and 22. Um, in the contemporary Bible, it says, if you are honest and innocent, you will keep your land. But in the King James Version, reads very differently, for the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it. So what does that mean exactly? So John Gill says, such as are upright in heart, who have a right spirit renewed in them, whose hearts are right with God, have the truth of grace in them, whose faith is unfringed, mm. their love without dissemination, and their hope without hypocrisy, and who are upright in their lives and conversations. So do you understand that in 21, it says, if you are honest and innocent, you will keep the land. Okay, so that makes it kind of like simple, but it doesn't give you that whole thing that he just said there, that it's being right with God and having the truth of grace in them. Hmm. And you, you can only find that by searching the scriptures even greater. And then in, in verse 22, it says, but the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the trans." 
transgressors shall be rooted out of it. But in the contemporary Bible, it says, if you do wrong and can never be trusted, you will be rooted. I mean, that yeah. that is like... It's contemporary. Yeah. I mean, that really leaves out a bunch of words. So, 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 you know, in, in our flesh, we, we can't, we can, we can't be perfect, but in Christ, we have been made perfect. Mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. sees mm -hmm. the blood of mm -hmm. his son on us. Mm -hmm. And again, John Gill says, and the perfect shall remain. By perfect, it means have all grace implanted in them. Though it is not come by maturity who have perfection of parts, but not of degrees, but are properly a proper are properly men of Christ and women, though they are not arrived to the measure of the statures of the fullness of Christ. So that means that we have not arrived or anything like that, but we are made perfect and holy in Christ. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? That's awesome. But you don't get that. You're not going to understand that. Look at different it, versions. It, yeah. Right. You can look at different versions so you can get a a, a, a little more like, what does this mean yeah. mm -hmm. exactly? Mm -hmm. But then you got to go back to the Hebrew. You got to go back to the Greek so that you can understand. This word upright right here, being straight, being correct, is, is yash, la, yashur, yashar, lashar, yashar. lashar. And I was looking at the Greek letters and I was saying, Jeremiah, you're going you're gonna <laughs> to elaborate on those Greek letters yeah, because yeah. I, I just thought that it was really... Um, well, you're, you're, uh, you're learning that too, which is good. I appreciate yeah, so that. So you can do well, that. Well, <laughs> you know, the thing about this two words, um, well, it's a few words for righteousness, but uh, what we have is, you know, sari, that's the Hebrew letter, right? The Hebrew letter for righteousness. But what's beautiful about the word sari represents, it's the picture of a man or a woman, a man, a woman, with their hands lifted high. Mm. And their and their knees bowed. The thing about the word sari, as we have yesha here, is that when you use the sari, the, the 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 letter for righteousness in the beginning of a word, it has that two hands and bowed with your knee. Okay, like praying. When you use it at the end of a letter, it's the hands lifted up, standing straight. So righteousness begins on our knees with God, mm. teaching us the word of God, so that at the end of our life, we find, we're found being standing straight, still with our hands lifted high, depending on God. You saw, you saw here, which is interesting, there's three letters, and it is the 10th letter, the Yod of the Hebrew alphabet, and it represents an open, strong, powerful hand. Mm. The second letter, which is the Shin, represents teeth, and it's pressure. It's a lot of pressure. When you eat, you put pressure down on the teeth, uh, with the teeth, and you and you bite the food, and it it destroys the food. Okay, basically. And then you have the resh, which represents a head. What's interesting about this right here is that we see the hand of God. The righteousness of God is pressure upon the head. Mm. Mm. It's not easy to live a righteous life. It is pressure. But you know, th this word resh is in the very... Remember I tell you where we always go back to? We can always go back to Genesis chapter mm -hmm. 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. The word beginning has resh in it, which represents the head. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God, the righteous God, created all things righteously mm -hmm. by his hand. And let me tell you, when you look at creation... There's a lot of power to look at, and the pressure of all things that came from God's Word is created. So whenever we're walking as upright people, we have to understand it means to be straight up. It means to be straight mm -hmm. up in mm -hmm. every sense of the word, emotionally, uh, uh, you know, to be agreeable with God and His Word. So that's why some contemporary versions, they lighten it a little bit for us to understand because we don't... We don't read or talk like the King James anymore. But you know what? The King James Version for me is still the closest to the translation of the Hebrew and the Greek. 
Um, and so when we're looking at this honesty, of course, you have to be honest. But a person can be honest, watch this, and not be saved, of course. Hmm. But it's you cannot be righteous before God hmm. without Christ. Christ is the upright one. And so when we look at this, well, the upright shall dwell. Hey, let's look at the word dwell real quick because we don't want to go past this. This is too good. And it's a shakan, shakan. Now, mm -hmm. shakan is also a tabernacle. This is the word that God used also when he told Moses, I want you to build me a shakan, a tabernacle in the desert. Mm -hmm. So what is he saying? What he's saying is this. That the righteous know how to dwell in God no matter what the circumstances are. They're building a church in the desert. Think about this. He, they left Egypt, a beautiful green Goshen. Mm -hmm. And God takes them out of that and brings them to the desert and said, build me a house here. Mm -hmm. See, righteousness is opposite of that which people say, no, I want the green where a righteous person says, no, I want to dwell where God wants me to dwell, even if it's in the desert. Mm. It's like that so. thing, um, the grass always looks greener on the other <laughs> side. Well, that's what Lot did, right? Mm -hmm. Lot looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, when Abraham said, you choose, you go to the left, I'll go to the right, etc." So Lot looked at, at, in his wisdom, he looked at Sodom and Gomorrah. He says, man, that's green. That's beautiful. Why should I look where the other side is desert? Mm-hmm. So he chose the green, and Abraham chose the desert. And as soon as he left, in his wisdom, to go to the green, God told Abraham, now lift up your eyes, look at the land. What land? It's desert. He said, I'm going to give it all to you. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we look at, at a circumstance and we at a circumstance where God says, I'm giving you this. You say, I don't see nothing but desert. He says, keep looking, because you're going to see that it's it's not just for you, but for the posterity that comes out of you. This is wisdom to have enough to leave behind for our posterity, our yeah. generations, you know, for other generations. Sometimes, sometimes we and when we look sometimes um, about uh, regarding the, the the land, we 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 think about here, here, this mm -hmm. this land, our land, our surroundings. That God, if you know those that are upright, He's just going to give you like here on earth. Okay, and we forget that there's one coming. It says it's a new heaven and a new earth that we should be looking forward to. That's right. Yeah, you know, and right. and not just and not just be conformed mm -hmm. to the patterns of this world. The meek shall inherit the earth. Okay, this is God's promise for those who, what, who are humble. But that's part of the beatitudes, isn't it? But when you read the other the other parts of the attitude, it says, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they sh for they shall for theirs is the, the the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted." Then it says, "Blessed are the meek." So you see, the process of inheriting is that you have to say, "God, I'm bankrupt without you. I don't have wisdom. You have all the wisdom." You know, I mourn over the sin in my life and the sins of this world. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that's you know that's the only way we get wisdom. To stand upright before God, to walk in the journey, the way. And yeah. this, and we talked about also the word keep, which is a shepherd's word, that he builds a a circle of protection around the sheep at night so that the predators cannot get in. Mm -hmm. uh, wisdom does that, right? Wisdom is the dwelling place. Shekhan, we just read that we are dwelling in God and his wisdom keeps him safe, keeps us safe from the predators. So Let's move to the uh, next. 22. Yeah. Now, notice what I love about this. Numbers is not a coincidence. 222. I know. I mean, you know, I, I, know. I don't know if you remember. I saw, I saw oh, that. Of course you did. <laughs> did you, you remember that old, uh, well, when we grew up, it was a, it was a sitcom called Room 222. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was a classroom. Mm -hmm. It was about a lot of ventures in that classroom. Well, you know, the number two is the number of witness, but 22 represents the word of God. And it's interesting that he says, but the wicked shall be cut off. From why? the earth, mm -hmm. and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. What's going to happen, though? They're going to be rooted out because the word of God is going to judge them and cut them. Remember, the word Amen. of God is a sword. Amen. It's a double-edged sword. And when it strikes, it cuts off. Amen. And 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 not long ago, I was, I was, um, I was studying, you know, I was looking at the numbers and I was saying, 
22 and 22 also comes comes up with destruction that's meaning right destruction that's right so i can understand nothing is a coincidence of god <laughs> i can see where he would put that verse there of course because those that are wicked not just merely those that do wrong and can never be trusted because we can do wrong and 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 there are times that we might not be trusted in certain areas okay so what's going to happen to us we're going to be rooted out no of course not because we belong to him right but that that word is not it's is amazing that he he would use 22 to describe the wicked mm -hmm. um being cut off the earth and mm -hmm. the transgressors being rooted out of it the guilty those who are criminals. You know what God considers a criminal in the spiritual sense? Everyone who is not saved is a criminal mm. because they're breaking his law. Mm. But now what uh, about the Christian? Right? Of course, but now what about the Christian? We're saved, living in the Shekinah of God, the tabernacle. We're under the, the shadow of his wings. Are we criminals when we break the law? Yes, with the exception that Christ took the punishment of our, of our criminal acts. That's the difference. That's why people are going to hell. People are going to hell because they're criminals without justification. Of course. Right. Where, where the saved, we could be criminals with the justification of Christ. That doesn't, shall we continue to be criminals? No. No, by no means. By because no means. we know that all these things are against God. So watch this. But the wicked shall be cut off, as we know here. The word cut off means, watch this, a cutting off, off, or down from anything such as a covenant. And listen to this. A covenant in the sense that the sacrificial animal is cut in half. Mm. So I, I, I want to say this very carefully, but I've said it before. If, if a person does not accept the sacrifice of Christ on the cross that he sacrificed, in the end, when they're thrown into the lake of fire, they will burn as a sacrifice forever. Mm. Now, they say, well, how long is forever? As long as Jesus Christ is our sacrifice, our propitiation for our sins, that's how long people will burn in hell. It's, it's, it's the balance of justice that comes from the wisdom of God. The balance of justice that comes from the wisdom of God. A transgressor is someone that breaks a law. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a difference though between iniquity and transgression. Iniquity is the perversion of what lives inside of us because of sin, and that leads us to break laws, which is a transgression. Mm -hmm. And to be rooted out is the hard thing. So today, you know, we can think about the cross and um, being Good Friday, and the two thieves on um on either side of Jesus and how one mocked him and how one said remember me so we know that one was um as the bible says here the wicked shall be cut off from the earth so one had been cut off from the earth and he was rooted out but one the other one was remembered because Jesus said Today, today, so you will be with you me. You will be with me in paradise. in paradise. So this Friday that we celebrate the Pasach, which is the that's a nice word mm, Pasach, mm -hmm. Pasach, and and Christ fulfilled that word Pasach when He stretched His arms out on the cross. Amen. Enjoy the meal, mm -hmm. for they were commanded to eat the lamb all night long, and we are in a dark and weary world, walking in the night. Therefore, we must chew, eat, mm. celebrate, yeah. and honor Remember. the Passover mm -hmm. feast that Christ is our Passover lamb. Let's eat of him and be satisfied. God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. Amen.